metal and everything like that. Um, now the RPGs, they must have gotten from Iran. Okay, well I'd be happy to read into it if you provide me with evidence that they don't have explosives on the target. They, they, they retooled them, they put, a, they put another bomb on the front of it that would penetrate through the tanks. Yeah. Okay. But so, but, but, you know, that's the only explosives that I know of that they have. They you know, have uh, RPGs. RPGs. Yeah, they have RPGs. Yeah, they have RPGs. No, they have a lot of stuff. Okay, but if you can provide me with evidence, uh, I can read my email. You can email me something yeah. about you know, what you think that there's no explosives. But even if, even if there were no explosives, which I think is highly unlikely on the tip of the rocket, if it's a big rocket, it crashes through a floor, stat, like, punctures people, and, like, make the floor break, and, like, everyone falls on it, people get crushed under it. You know what else? The Iron Dome system, when it intercepts these uh, mortars, the shrapnel falls on the people underneath. There's no explosive. Okay, well, maybe and also, the videos that I've than... seen of, of, of the mortars that have made it through the Iron Dome system show a pipe sticking in the ground with no, no incendiary sort of evidence around it, no explosion, no crater, just a hole from well, the That's not what I've seen. I saw, I saw a big crater. Okay, yeah. that's one. Yeah. I haven't seen that either. Well, you know, the, 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 there's one very specific okay. Nevertheless, the health ministry does not identify the individuals who died as a result of the Palestinian fire, even though the Israeli Defense Force has reported that 12 percent of rockets fired during the first month of the war fell inside Gaza. More than 1,000 total missiles. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I haven't oh, yeah. heard that yeah. before. Think about this. And then even... So, when they, so the earlier part of this article had Hamas admitting to there being around 22,000. And then you still know they don't differentiate between dead militants and... You can speculate on how many of the militants Israel's killed, or what they classify as a militant. But even if you... But I'm not concerned about whether or not the bodies are identified, you know, with a name. I'm concerned that there's a dead body. That's it, that's all. Yeah, obviously. It's still amongst the, you know, 30,000, 40,000. With no, about 10,000 buried, you know, who haven't been no, found listen, yet. They, they, for there for it to be classified as a death, you need to have an actual body, you need, or you need to have a name, or something. Yeah. The, the, what this article is saying is that there's zero evidence for, uh, I think it was 11, uh, over 11,000 of these deaths. Zero. And the point is, Hamas has every reason to, to, to put it up. And you know that Israel actually... Except that Hamas doesn't control the number. That's the hospital that does. No, it, right. It's, it, it got Hamas run. I don't be Hamas the doctors, Hamas you know, but they're... No, look. It's run, the health ministry or whatever you know, it's called, is run by Hamas. Like, it's a fact. It was cited in the article, people... Actually, actually, there I'm are... I'm not saying every hospital there is... Both, yeah, there's both uh, Palestinian hospitals and then there's UN hospitals. Yeah, but we... I mean, a bunch of... So the UN hospitals, you know, are independent. You know, they report the number of deaths to both the UN and to Hamas, the Ministry of Health. Yeah, but... So it's okay. complicated. Hamas, Hamas, maybe not every single employee of the hospitals is all, all hell Hamas, like I'm so loyal to you, but it's, they have access to the numbers because it's run by Hamas, and they can influence you, they can say, provide this number. Hamas can... Uh, uh, can no, because the number goes to, to the two agencies, both the Ministry of Health and to the UN. The same number. And then they check with each other to see if they receive the same number. Like it's not that hard to provide the same number. I mean, like, they, we, we know that some of the, some of the employees at UNRWA were participating by 27. I'm not, I don't actually believe they no, should... No, none of them did. They were working. No, they... They, they may they have been Hamas members. Okay, what I'm saying, uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of the UNRWA people, some of them participated in October 7th, some of them were Hamas members. I don't think that's a good reason to defund the UNRWA, because they're doing good work and they're helping people, and it's because there are a few Hamas employees and it doesn't make it... Out of 30,000, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Um, so a ceasefire yeah. has to happen. I you know, everybody can agree no, that, you everyone, know, irrespective okay. of their political Ask, position. You unless know? you find the most fundamentalist, right-wing, I love Netanyahu person, everyone is going to say, I want this war to end, mm -hmm. but for the war to end, Hamas needs to surrender and we need the hostages back. Hamas hasn't taken very well, hasn't taken very much care of the hostages. But they've stated that they agree to release the hostages if there's a permanent ceasefire. Look, Not a six, can, six week uh, so ceasefire think, is no good. Okay, what do you think Hamas is end game is by this? Like, like really the Palestine is going to be recognized by no, the it's UN. No, not. But you, you, 
later, I mean, before, it looked like physically... Even the U.S. is going to recognize Palestine. They're not. No, they're not. They should eventually, but now is not the time. We're in the middle of a war. They're not rewarding them with the state. Israel and Netanyahu has already said that. Like you started this war, we're not going to give you your state. That would be rewarding you. Oh, it's not up to him. Well, it's not just Netanyahu, the entire cabinet. And even, I'm sure, if Benny Gantz... They don't have to recognize Palestine for Palestine to be recognized by the U.N.? Yes, but even if Benny Gantz or Yair Lapid were the prime minister, they'd still, even them... Yeah, no, they're no good either. No, I like them. But what I'm saying, they wouldn't do the... They wouldn't do it either. Yeah. Because when... In the middle of the war, they can't just say, we're sorry, like, give... Here's your territory. Okay, there has to be a ceasefire. Palestine will be recognized. And if Israel does not recognize Palestine... Well, by Palestine, do you mean Gaza or the West Bank of War? Both. Okay, but that'll take some time. You can't... That can't be one of the conditions. Well, this year, it's going to happen. Okay. Then, if Israel doesn't recognize Palestine, Israel will be suspended from the United Nations General Assembly. They might as well already be. They're condemned and talked about more than every horrible country in the world combined. They obviously have bias against them. It's because the UN has a responsibility. Because Israel created... The UN created Israel. Okay, well, I still don't think that justifies the fact that North Korea, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, like, Venezuela, every... every country that... or China, like the Uyghur Muslims, every country that has arguably way worse things that it's doing or going on in it, it all combined aren't talked about or condemned as much in the UN as Israel. There's an obvious bias there. Because it's a problem. It doesn't go away. Yeah. Um... And Israel doesn't, you know, follow the resolutions of the UN General Assembly. They ignore them. Okay, but if Hamas... Do you think Hamas would rather surrender or die? Die. Yeah. Okay, that's the problem. That's why they need outside pressure to say, maybe put into perspective, more and more of your people are going to die unless you surrender. Israel's not going to stop. They've already said that. If, if Hamas surrenders, the war is okay. over. But the pressure on Hamas is not to surrender. The pressure is to, uh, to uh, go for a ceasefire. And they have stated that they agree no, to look, a ceasefire. Look, they, they're addicted to the ceasefire. There's not, be, there's not going to be a permanent ceasefire. Israel never agree to that. That won't be that won't be beneficial. That will just be giving up, saying, then "Fine, then we will continue." Either they surrender, or they get, or the war goes on and they get obliterated. Ceasefire now, so they're not shy. Um, so, well, if, look, there. Would you would you think it would be beneficial for for both Gaza and Israel for Hamas to surrender in theory? No. Why? Because they'll be killed. No, no. What I, remember what I said about about this big thing that we would have demands saying. We don't. We, we are not going to be killed. We're going to put on, be put under legal trial. Yeah, but Israel will not recognize that. No, they. I think they would. If Hamas promised to actually, they have stated turn otherwise. Turn themselves in to Israel. No, no. Four ministers, including Netanyahu, have stated that they will not uh, make a ceasefire with Hamas, and they will uh, keep on attacking Hamas until Hamas is eradicated. No, no but if they, that, that that statement doesn't mention anything about surrender, it also pushed for surrender of Hamas because that obviously would be ideal. They're, waste, they're using money every day, uh, like, to... They can't keep this going forever, you know? Um, they want the war to end, too, but they can't just say, oh, we're fine, we'll leave the rest of you Hamas boys, like, we'll leave you, we'll let you, let you be, like... They won't. They really, no, if Hamas they're gonna, surrender... They're gonna try to move the Palestinians out of Gaza. No, what I'm saying is... And they're gonna okay, they, take over the all, land... Egypt, put Egypt in, would never... Like, where would they go? They can't go anywhere. The UN... Every single country, including the U.S., would not let that. They would not let that happen. Israel just couldn't do that. Okay, There's, there would be. They really couldn't. Out of, so what I'm saying is, if Hamas surrenders, they say they have conditions that this has happened before in history. They have conditions like uh, we, you, you can't move into Gaza, you can't push the Palestinians out. We want to be put into legal trial. And then they'll surrender, which would be beneficial. Yeah, but the Israel military is going to stay in inside Gaza. Well, obviously they need to they need to make sure it's fully demilitarized. I don't, and then they'll and they'll pull out. Obviously, and there should be UN stuff about that too. Then they'll treat the, the Palestinians in Gaza like they treat the Palestinians in the West Bank. Well, that in which the land is, and I'm sure is if, slowly when there's stolen a re-election, like Chuck by Schumer settlement, said, you know. You know, Yair Lapid wouldn't. Well, wouldn't he, he's against settlements, all right? Like a lot of the stuff. I've would never be, heard that. What do you mean? Yeah, Lapidus against settlements. 
i haven't heard him say that even if it's true you know like he's he's he's